a teacher of theatre and arts. Uh, he's Professor Osita Kagwe, and he's the head of the Department of Theatre Arts at the Goldsmiths University College. Uh, let's give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And immediately on his right is our bishop, uh, who is Bishop Pat Lynch. Uh, he's one of the foremost educationists among the clergy of this diocese because he was first a teacher. And I like to say first a teacher because I know that teachers also teach bishops. And after he's been taught, he then became a bishop. And it's great to see Bishop Pat Lynch here. A round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. And so just before we pray, uh, Emmanuel, get the best music. I want to get somebody dancing down here right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite the reason we are here, the author of the book that we are about to launch, Father Adolfo himself. He's going to dance here and then rise as we receive Father Adolfo. especially those who experience exploitation, help us to reach out to those who suffer and help us to be a healing presence in our society, building bridges, healing those who are wounded, giving a sense of belonging to all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please, please, please. I invite our chairman, Professor Kagwe, to address the gathering. Prof. On behalf of the uh, Luncheon Committee, uh, welcome you to this very important occasion. Uh, it's an occasion that is very dear to me in so many ways. I'm going to talk about that, but it's a pleasure to see you all here coming to support uh, this very wonderful work that uh, Father Adolphus has done. Uh, 
a little bit about my knowledge of this work and, and the significance that I think it has. Was well, that I saw this project in so many of its incarnations. The first time for Adolphus mentioned this work to me. Uh, a lot of the things that he was talking about, I am an equal person like him. But some of the things he was talking about took me completely unaware. And that I wasn't surprised about that either because one of the things that culture does is that culture naturalizes things. You know, some of the things he was talking about widows, about women within Igbo society, because I grew up in Igbo society, I took them for being natural. They were natural things. I, I, I couldn't question them. I didn't question them because I saw no need. And perhaps because of the distance and then my own journey uh, in academia and, and learning, had already opened my eyes. So when he was speaking about these things, he forced me to look at them again. And that was very important. So I said about knowing about this work in its various incarnations. And I had to tell rather I had meetings with Father Dalpas in my office in New Cross when we were talking about this work. I read, the, I read this work from its inception as a proposal that was going on forward to Middlesex. Thank you, Ojero. Uh, Dr. Orji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Adolphus, it's a great joy for me to come and give the keynote address. And what I'd like to do is say a few words, first of all, and how my experience here in South London in the parish of Nunhead opened my eyes to the importance of recognizing culture in our daily life and the impact it has in a very positive way on our lives and on our communities, but also the shadows that it might bring with us. But secondly, I'd like, and this will be the major part of the address, I'd like to say some words uh, from the point of view of my job as chair of the Office of Migration Policy for the Missions Conference. Some years ago, many of you know, I was appointed to work in the parish of Nunhead in South East London. And that time in that parish was a great opener, eye-opener to me. It helped me recognize the richness of the different cultures that are part and parcel of London. In that particular parish, we had people from Ireland, people from South East London, many, many people from West Africa, from Ghana and Nigeria and Syria alone. And we had a, a very, very strong community from Latin America. And very quickly I began to realize that the culture that one is brought up in and that one embodies in all that you do, in prayer, in uh, developing friendships, in community life, is a great gift not only for the individual, for families, but for the wider community. Thank you, my Lord Bishop. Thank you, my Lord Bishop. That was very inspiring. Because even though Father Adolphus localizes it in just one small part of Igbo land, but the women are crying out. We've already been told by Michael that we must see ourselves as a focus for change, to make a difference, to make things better. It seems to me that there is a lot of challenge in that book for us, and we need to have a very perfect understanding of the issues raised. Because like the chairman said, even though he comes from that part of the country, he does not have the full awareness of the issues that are discussed in that book. It means that the challenge for us is to read the book. And in reading the book, resolve to do things differently and better. Now, Father Adolphus is going to speak to us, but I think we need a minute or two of reflection on this. And you can talk among yourselves and decide 
in what form you propose to launch the book. I think you need to hold that discussion among yourselves because everybody is going to launch it. I want us to launch the book first so that he can add to his speech. When he sees the momentum, the inspiration for him to speak will be greater. And so I'm going to invite the chief launcher, Mr. Patel. It gives me great pleasure to launch this book. And my first thank you to Adolphus, Dr. Adolphus for giving me this opportunity to be here this evening amongst you. you a lot of people have come from different parts of the, of the globe to be launching this book today here. Firstly, like more, many of them have said, you know, some of them are not from Africa. I happen to be from Africa, but I'm from Uganda, unlike David from Kenya. I was born there and I had come here during the exodus of Idi Amin in 1975. And uh, as mentioned by a great man here, I have done well during these years and I'm in the pharmacy business. I have five pharmacies in the borough of Salah. What Adolphus have said there is the other part of it, which is uh, the suffering of the women, which not many of us know. I mean, just recently you have seen the rape that took place in Bay. The women there were suppressed, they, they could not come out until something like that had happened. And then the uprising even there has become more and been known to the world. So it's a very, very great thing that Dr. Adolphus has done to bring out the situation where, how these women are suffering. Some when they cannot have a male child or some when they are a widow. You see, so it's a great book and I think the launching of it will go very well. To start with, I'd like to make my own contribution of 1,001 pounds. I don't know if any of you watched Iba Maka. Is that two weeks ago? Yes. Did you? Yes. Did you see me? Yes. Did you listen to me? Yes. Fantastic. The reason is because this book is me. The book is me. While you are all sitting here watching and listening, it doesn't seem real, but that's me. I lost my husband over 25 years ago. Four children, the youngest 18 months. Five years, nine years, and twelve years. And you know what? Back in Nigeria, my husband's property was taken away from me. The only thing that I was told that for me to survive is for the youngest brother or uncle or anything to become my immediate husband. And that is what you are telling someone who is well educated, they didn't care about that. I'm a midwife, but nobody cared about that. So you think about those ones that are not educated. Those ones who have no skill. Those ones who cannot call anyone. Because back in Nigeria, once you're married, you're married. Even when there is domestic violence, you are there, whether you like it or not. Even when you run back to your family, they say to you, go back and sort your problem with your husband. So women, we have got problems. And it's still happening. But I'll tell you one thing. Since completing my marriage road, I said to myself, I think my journey is to go and talk about inspiring women. Because... <laughs>
a great achievement. Great support from my little self. I thank in a special way my mentors in the journey of academics. My thanks goes to Bishop Pat, who is my role model, my father, who always, whenever I have one to one with him, he will cuddle me with great advice. I thank also Professor Osita Okabwe, who I contacted at the initial stage when I was reflecting in my PhD process. He welcomed me on board as a brother in fraternity, called me and gave me a great insight. Supported me with materials and wealth of experience, he guided me well. I thank also Father David, my parish priest who welcomed me to this UK, and I stayed with him for many years. We had a good rapport, and we walked hand in hand, supported each other, and bonded each other well. The world is bonded. To Julia Head, Director of Pastoral and the Spiritual Department in Mosley Hospital, where I started my clinical practical during my studies, 2005. Julia was there for me, very supportive, very empowering. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. How did I come into this piece of academic work? It's a revelation. After my ordination in 1992, I was posted in a parish for three months. And when the bishop of Boya Diocese in Cameroon needed priests to work in his diocese, the bishop called three of us and blessed us. We went. We stayed for three years. And over there, I was in the parish. I came to realize certain things, cultural issues that we take for granted, especially the women living in a rural community, voiceless but disempowered. Part of me is speaking strongly how to bridge the gap, but because of limitation in me and as assistant priest, I could say little. But what I did with the context of the situation is to approach. <laughs> <laughs> 